Okay, I'm finally back to finish up my series on progesterone and perimenopause. I'm so sorry it's taken me so long to finish this. This is the most important video, and so of course I've taken my time and tried to figure out what I'm going to say during this video um, to steer people in the right direction. The most important thing I'm going to say is right now, here it is, you need to work with a doctor if you're going to take progesterone to treat your perimenopausal fluctuation and hormone imbalance. It's absolutely imperative that you work with a doctor and don't do this on your own based on what I'm saying today or what my story tells you about my own experience. So there it is. Even if you take over-the-counter progesterone cream, you definitely want to work with a doctor because this is tricky and not everyone responds the same way. It is not predictable what your response will be. So with that said, I will tell you my story with my own journey taking bioidentical progesterone cream as a supplement. Now this is not a progestin, not a synthetic, not a drug. It's a natural form of progesterone just like that which your body makes. You can find it over the counter in uh, health food stores and natural pharmacies. You can also get it from compounding pharmacies, a little bit stronger doses in some cases in that in that case, but you'd have to have a prescription if you're getting it from a compounding pharmacy. And the other most important thing I'm going to say today about this is that I am not the expert. I'm still learning, and we all are still learning because this is a very burgeoning science. Um, hormone replacement therapy, whether it's natural or synthetic, is, is in its infancy, really. And so it's an unfortunate time to be trying this on for size and there are definitely a bunch of doctors who do it really well and I'll refer you to them down below in the show notes of course. There's um, a really good one here in my home state of Oregon down in Ashland that I've just learned about and I've been learning from. But like I was going to say, the really important thing to say is that is we just don't know enough about it to be confident about anything. We don't know about the repercussions because we haven't been doing this for very long. But there is a resource, there's a video here on YouTube that is an excellent scholarly review of all of the different studies on progesterone and natural, especially natural and bioidentical progesterone uh, supplementation. And that's one that I really wish that you will watch. It's, it takes some patience, it takes some rewinding, even for someone like me who is in medical field and has been re trained in research methods. You'll want to re-listen to some of the complex stuff, especially because these are Europeans speaking and they have heavy accents and you won't understand everything that they say. But it's an excellent, excellent review of all of the studies and the intricacies of progesterone supplementation and estrogen. They, they talk about estrogen supplementation as well in this video that I'm linking below. And so um, with that, I will also tell you what I know in brief and a, a summary of what I know without going too long here. I know that progesterone cream really saved me a lot of grief in early perimenopause when I was having emotional flux and nothing else was working. I tried a lot of the supplements that I have talked about in prior videos in this series myself and they did not work quickly enough. I'm sure they would have worked over time. They take a long time to take effect, but my symptoms were really strong and I needed something stronger and so I am glad that I took progesterone cream. Um, later on, I took some estrogen patches, and I'm not so glad about that because that might have had a little bit of a influence on my breast cancer journey, and that's something I just won't, won't know until the science uncovers more. A lot of people will say you should not take progesterone alone without estrogen. A lot of people will say it's totally fine to take progesterone alone without estrogen. It is definitely true that you should not take estrogen alone without progesterone. But it did help me for a very short time. I did not stay on it very long. I did not take very much of it. I'm not going to tell you how much I took so that you won't run out and do what I did uh, because you really need to do it under the advice and supervision of a doctor who is also monitoring your hormone levels in the ways that they see fit. So, like I said, I will definitely mention doctors below who I would recommend for you who might be in your area or might work with you online if they're not. This is something that has actual my actual clients who I've worked with have had trouble with at different times not everyone responds the same some people have an exacerbation of symptoms so instead of their symptoms getting better they actually get worse and that's only like one percent of the population according to the studies that are mentioned in the video that I'm linking um, that summary video that I mentioned 
So not very many people have that exacerbation of perimenopause symptoms, but some people do. And it, it looks like a more intense uh, kind of PMS, premenstrual syndrome set of symptoms when it comes out that way. So if you are going rogue and trying some progesterone cream over the counter on your own and you have those kind of PMS symptoms elevated, you are one of the people that probably shouldn't be taking progesterone supplementally. So um, there's also a lot of debate over whether it's best to use a cream and where to use the cream. And because I'm not a doctor, I'm not going to discuss that in this video. Uh, that is beyond my scope of practice as a nutritionist. But I have talked a lot in prior videos about the food and vitamins, minerals, um, amino acids, <clears throat> cofactors that you might benefit from taking. And that is in my scope of practice. So please check out those videos if you haven't seen them already. And I will link a list of them below and here up above for you. It's a crazy, wacky world that we live in with lots of estrogens flying around in the air that um, can influence our progesterone as well. And I talk about that in most of my videos. Estrogen is way scarier than progesterone and way more toxic in, in the case of xenoestrogens and endocrine disruptors. But um, progesterone supplementation is a little less scary than estrogen supplementation. So I do encourage you to talk to a doctor about it if you've tried everything else that I've mentioned in this series and it doesn't work for you and your symptoms are getting severe, especially if they're emotional symptoms and you don't want to go on any drugs for depression or anxiety. This is a way to address that. And it's also a way to address um, some things in menopause later on. Mostly what's talked about in menopause is estrogen supplementation. And like I said, that is a little more scary. And I'm not gonna talk about menopause at least for a couple more years until I'm headed into it myself um, because I like to talk from experience as well as talking about my clients' experiences. But for now, for perimenopause, I'm wrapping up this series. And I hope that you've learned a lot from it, and I hope to hear your questions, and I'll make new videos based on the questions that you have that are not clarified yet from what you've learned from this series in a future series sometime. Please subscribe if you've enjoyed this series, and let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.